Uh, here we go. All right, excellent. Welcome back to the big board. Taking a look at campaigns of, uh, sorry, campaign of nations. It's a John Tisson design. A succinct seven page rule book with a double sided chart here to help you get through the details with this uh, double CRT. It's a, a basic odds table with a follow on casualty calculation based on the number of steps involved or strength points as the case may be in the combat. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And this game is uh, pretty inter interesting because it uh, deals with a fairly long period of time at what we'll call a operational scale uh, situation where it's, you know, 1813, the coalition is uh, attempting to mess with Napoleon, uh, push him out of uh, Central Europe. So we've got Prussians, Russians and Austrians and the Swedes. Uh, fight against uh, various German states and other allies of Napoleon. And, uh, you know, this is a, fast, a relatively fascinating Napoleonic uh, campaign. And uh, this system seems to, seems to fit fairly well. This is uh, uh, lifted and adjusted for from Hood's Last Gamble and more, more Aggressive Attitudes and uh, Objective Shreveport. And they've uh, adjusted this, the scale and time period, are obviously are different, uh, but and nevertheless, it, it's, gener it's zeroing in on the core functional capabilities of the various forces at play here. And I'm only a couple of turns in <clears throat> and I think what we have here is a good representation probably of the overall historical situation. What I'm, what I'm, uh, and, and what I'm interested in seeing is how the game will play out historically and how the, uh, how the forces are going to match off from a leadership perspective and uh, force combined arms capabilities and things like that. And that might be one of the, the weaknesses for me that I, I'm seeing in this style of system kind of telescoped out a little bit to sort of take in a larger scale, I guess. So, uh, you know, it's not grand tactical and it's not uh, operational. It's feels somewhere in between. Maybe it is operational. I don't know. You know, we are, we are having to deal with supply and we are, and we are, we are, you know, generalizing and abstracting some of the force capabilities of, uh, of units. You know, there's no significant value to cavalry other than the fact they can move a little bit faster and they can retreat before combat. Um, you won't see any artillery units on the on the board, they're factored into the various formations. Nor will you, uh, and, and you get some, you get some leadership benefit from Napoleon style chappies, and terrain's going to play a little bit into it if you're in this sort of rough terrain here, which is kind of uh, the the northern extreme of uh, the borders around well the borderline for. Uh, these fellas here for the Austrians and whatnot. And so, so I, it, it, it feels a little generic to me. Now, one of the saving graces for the combat system is that there are a swag of cards, which are underneath my notebook here, but uh, which you can play one or many once uh, for a given turn or combat, as the case may be. And that does add some very period specific and some very uh, uh, campaign-specific capabilities. There are a couple of interesting things with combat. Uh, the ability to coordinate your forces requires a die roll. The uh, ability to concentrate your forces on the defense will uh, and on the attack. No, the defense only, sorry, uh, will require a, a, a die roll. Uh, there's a die roll for fortified cities that's going to influence 
who who gets the better of the other side over and above any other results. Uh, trying to think of other stuff in here that uh, kind of gives you a little extra flavor. There are bridging capabilities here. I do like the I do like the dual CRT. I'm I'm okay rolling two dice there because you roll a d6 for the combat result, and that's going to give you disruptions for either side, or a retreat for either side, or indeed an elimination. Um, but uh, then you will uh, tally up the number of combat factors involved in the combat. And it will be the minimum SP for both sides. And then you're going to look at what those result is going to be. Uh, and that may give you, you know, one step loss or multiple step losses. So that can have an influence. Obviously, the bigger the battle, the more people die. Uh, the larger your concentration of forces like here, you end up with a, a pretty decent chance not only of disrupting the enemy. Am I? Yeah, am I? I am in screen good. I've got the camera off to one side. And, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, big force comes together to try and knock out a little force. It could end up poorly for you and you could lose a step. So that can have a, a negative influence. Now, the other nice thing here is it's just not all go, go, go the entire time. Uh, after the first four turns, which is about eight days, there's a mandatory rest turn that's required. At some point in that uh, in the in a set of turns from turn six through twelve, you need to rest your forces. And if you don't rest your forces, you bad things happen. You'll uh, pick up a, a disruption uh, on your forces, and if things go poorly in a combat, you, it, it makes things worse for you. Uh, and then you'll need to take another rest uh, sometime between the thirteenth and the nineteenth turn. So that uh, that gives a, a lot of feel to the game too because most napoleonic systems uh gen you know i'm going to say at this scale anyway probably going to let you just run amok uh you know zucker is really the only one that's got sort of operational scale games you know the days series days one one x through five x or whatever it is um there's not a lot of resting required there. There is attrition, but it's easy to game the, the attrition in the Zucker system. Uh, this is not as detailed as those various levels of, of Zucker operational games. Uh, at, at, the, at their most, uh, most complex, Zucker stuff is a bit of a pain, and at its most simple, it's probably too simple and I think this probably falls somewhere in the middle I I would like to have seen a little more nuance with the combat to be perfectly frank even just after a couple of turns I can see that uh, I'm kind of like yeah okay I'm just going to pile these guys in here and try to attack this one unit Napoleon's got a classic situation though where he's got to fight forces over there he's got to fight forces in the north and it's got to fight uh, forces approaching from the south as well. So you can see up here around Berlin, there are various forces there. So we're trying to screen here, protect these uh, supply depots and garrisons uh, and whatnot, and then deal with the, the Prussian, uh, sorry, the uh, the whites, or the Austrians, I believe, and, uh, and the Russians, deal with those as quickly as he can, then maybe go over here. So it's it, it does capture that, historical maneuver situation that Napoleon found himself in on many occasions. Uh, so so I'm enjoying it so far is what I'm trying to let you know. I, I don't know if I'm going to play the entire scenario. I'm going to, we're going to run through another handful of turns and see what the rest, the rest, uh, rest turn makes you do and how that works and get a feel for it. Beautiful artwork on the maps. Uh, the you neon know, the counters are the right colors, I suppose, but they're just it just doesn't it's not grabbing me as much as some other other games have. Wonderful artwork on the cards. They're very richly detailed and nice quality. Beautiful map, nice fonts. You know, you can see all this here. It's fairly nice, right? So. You know, I, I think it's going to be a, a fun game. I imagine I would enjoy this much, much more opposed than I would solo because I'm, I'm kind of going through the motions here with this. 
uh, there's no second guess. Right, I'm trying to second guess myself and all that sort of stuff. Where p- playing opposed here, I think would be a really good fun game, and I might try and get my buddy Pete and I put this on the table and give it a run for its money because it's kind of level of complexity and Napoleonics that he likes, and it doesn't have some of the the silliness from other Napoleonic systems that I've seen at this kind of scale with uh, you know units. Well, let's not get into other systems and their weaknesses. Let's just say that this is an interesting uh, combat system that does give you some flavor, probably not all the flavor that I would like. <clears throat> so anyway, I'll leave that to you. I'll uh, check back in as we progress and we'll see what transpires from there. We'll talk to talk to blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Maybe I'll be able to edit that bit out. We'll talk to all of you real soon. Take care.